Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. Busy, busy time right now. Lots of media events are thankfully starting to open up and we're traveling to, but we're here for another virtual unveil. This is one that many of you have been waiting for. This is the unveil of the production version of the 2022 Honda Civic. The full lineup from LX all the way up to Turing. Lots of changes, especially wait until you see the interior. I'm curious, I'm just so curious to find out what you think about it by putting your comments, of course, in that comment section. But without further ado, let's dive in and see what this 2022 Civic is all about. And there it is, sitting with the special dramatic lighting. The one you're looking at right now is a Rally Red, of course, 2022 Honda Civic. That one is a sport trim. Now, the Civic's been around, if you have not been aware of this, since 1973. And since then, Honda has sold over 12 million Civics worldwide. You could see with the styling, you know, we looked already at that concept prototype. We featured that here on Rady's Rides not too long ago in a virtual unveil, just like this one. Now this is the full production model. So you're getting new sheet metal. You're getting redesigned, totally redesigned front fascia, headlights, even the signature LED lighting has been upgraded and updated for 2022, looking really sharp with those LED headlights. It's interesting because coming from the prototype to the production model, uh, I'm starting to appreciate a little bit more where Honda is going with the styling. Obviously, you could tell that they tamed it down in many different ways for this new 11th generation of the Civic. And I think that maybe now, while we're watching this, you might be in the comment section saying it looks like this kind of car. Oh, they didn't do it right and all that. I think this will really make sense once we see it in person. And hopefully that will be very, very soon here on Ready's Rise. But the taillights, the way they did the LED lighting, a little bit of a smoked effect on those rear taillight housings, that trunk. One thing you'll notice is that the trunk has a nice curve to the end of it that actually is there for aerodynamic efficiency. Now let's talk about what's going on here. Ever since 1973, Honda has been about what's called the human-centered approach. You're really going to notice that when you get to the interior, but on the exterior, you do have a longer wheelbase. So we're actually sep separating the front wheels from the rear wheels. There's a little bit more room. That's actually going to give you a little bit longer style looking of a Civic and, of course, all that interior space that comes with it. They move the A-pillars. The A-pillars are those pillars right by the windshield. They move those back and they extended the hood. What that does is it kind of gives your, your eyes a little trickery. It fools your occipital lobe, which is at the back of your head, believe it or not. So everybody has eyes in the back of their head. But anyways, I'm kind of going back to my teaching days when I used to teach psychology. But what that does is it gives you a visual perspective of the car being a little bit more uh, luxurious in a way, you know, going from that traditional compact, because it's a compact car, traditional compact car styling, longer hood, moving those eight pillars back. Another thing they did at the rear of the vehicle is they widened the track. So what that means is that the gap in between the rear wheels, it's a little bit wider. Look at that interior. They have blown it out of the water. Now, like I said, put in the comment section how you feel about this styling, whether you're talking about the exterior or the interior, it does have that iPad style screen. But here's the good news. Honda being all about that human centered approach, everything is perfectly within reaching distance. Everything is laid out to make your driving experience be that much more connected. Now, if you look at the shifter, the shift lever in this CVT uh, equipped sport, you'll notice that the lever is actually tilted just a little bit towards the driver, which makes sense because as you're reaching down to select your gear of where you're going, you're going to want that just a little bit tilted. But steering wheel looks nice, nice thick steering wheel. We have an updated um, gauge pod. Plus you're getting, when we go back to that infotainment system, seven inches starting off. So maybe not the largest, but that is the largest ever standard on a Honda Civic, if you go up the Turing trim, you can get an all new nine inch infotainment system. And obviously 
depending on the trim, you could get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, wireless charging. I love the, the fine touches in the interior, that metal honeycomb finish across the dash. That's actually a twofer. It actually talks about and showcases the style, but it also hides the AC vents. With the hood popped, I know a lot of people are wondering, well, Joe, what's powering this thing? So you're gonna be able to get your two engine options. The sad news is no manual transmission. So both engine options come standard with a CVT transmission. To me, that's a bit of a zonk, but the numbers don't lie. If, if people are not buying manual transmission Civics, what is the point, right? I mean, why would, why would Honda make them if nobody's buying them? So it kind of falls on where people are putting their money and what manufacturers are producing. But for this all new Civic, the standard engine is still there. That's a naturally aspirated two liter inline four. It's 158 horsepower, 138 pound feet of torque. There is a little bit of an upgrade for the 1.5 liter turbo. So the 1.5 liter turbo now has 180 horsepower, 177 pound feet of torque. The crazy news is Honda being the great engineering company, um, when it, especially when it comes to their engines, they actually have better fuel economy than the previous generation, especially even with producing a little bit more horsepower, a little bit better fuel economy. So the best that you're gonna see out of any of these combinations is gonna be 33 in the city, 42 on the highway, which is really, really, obviously, highly in that compact car class for fuel efficiency. And if you're concerned about the CVT, they did make, according to Honda, we, we're going to have to wait and see here on Ready's Rides, they did make a ton of refinements. So they changed a lot of the inner workings of the CVT transmission. You're going to have those pre-programmed shifts to make it feel more like a traditional automatic I personally would have liked to have seen the 10 speed in the Honda Civic. I think that would blow it away. But what you're looking at now, that red one, the rally red one, that was a sport. This is the Turing trim. So you start off just like before the gateway into the Civic Club is the LX. You go sport, you go EX, and then you go top trim with the Turing. Now, the crazy news about the Turing trim is that not only are you going to get that nine inch infotainment system, that's pretty massive, like I said, for a Honda Civic, you're also gonna get an all new 10.3 inch digital gauge pod. So all the gauges, all the instrumentation is, is a nice digital LED setup to give you great clear readouts, very nice to look at and easy to operate. That's another thing is that all the systems that Honda produces, they want them to be intuitive. So when looking at this Civic, you do have those two engine options and you're looking at a lot of that extra styling. Now, when you go Turing for the first time, you'll have the ability to get a Bose sound system. That's the first time that Bose is being placed in a Honda Civic. It's a 12 speaker system. You got your different drive modes. They upgraded the suspension across all the trims. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what about wheels? You know, wheels always make a car to me. You're looking at on this Turing, those are 18 inch wheels. So LX, is gonna be 16 inch. And I am gonna zonk those because, not because they're 16 inch, because it's a steel wheel with a plastic wheel cover, or like most people say, a hubcap, right? A hubcap. In 2022, we shouldn't have those kind of wheels. It should be at least an aluminum wheel, 16 inch. I'd be okay with that. But you go with 16 inch. If you go up to sport, that's an 18 inch. If you check off the EX box, that's gonna be a 17 inch wheel. And then turning you're right back to eight, eight in, uh, 18 inch wheel, nine, eight inch wheel. That'd be a pretty small little donut. But anyways, styling, definitely more elegant. I feel a higher, just looking at the pictures, looking at this B-roll footage, I feel a higher level, even from Honda, a higher level of fit and finish, which I didn't think was possible. But I think with the materials that they're using, I, I love that back end of the trunk. You can see how clean the lower bumper area is. It, it just seems a little bit more substantial. And I think a lot of it has to do with those fake plastic vents that were on the previous generation. I think by removing those, it really just gives it an overall better style of design, a, a cleaner style of design. I'm digging even the wheels and the turning trim. I mean, that machine aluminum, and then you have those uh, dark painted surfaces there. Of course, you're going to get color match mirror caps on the full turning trim, but 
you'll see looking at this b-roll footage I, I definitely can see other vehicles that are currently available some of the different styling cues and i guess the old adage imitation is the greatest form of flattery uh, can hold very true for all the brands but even the way that they did just a little bit of flaring around the fenders gives it that extra style and i'm telling you man if, if these tail lights really kind of show where Honda's going. I can't wait to see what they're going to do on the 11th generation Honda Accord. But steering wheel, obviously turn trim is going to be full leather wrapped. You can see peeking behind that wheel. That's that 10.3 inch digital LED gauge cluster. I think my favorite parts of the interior has, have got to be the knobs for all the different controls. They really did some thought and some process into putting that nice metal style finish and the honeycomb section across the the mid middle part from underneath the infotainment all the way to the passenger door it really as soon as i saw that i was like wow i've never seen anything like that before and it really does a great job of hiding the ac vents because it's all within that honeycomb grill design but it also makes it look very classy look at that instrumentation that gauge cluster, absolutely beautiful with the different colors, with the different fonts. It's able to reconfigure itself by going through the different modes and, and all the different um, readouts that you want are going to be all contained within that 10.3 inch section. It would have been nice to see at least a 10.25 inch screen because if you look at some of the competition, 10.25 inch screen. Um, but that 9-inch, the graphics really clear. Obviously, a touchscreen. It still has a volume knob, so that's great news. They didn't make that mistake by eliminating the volume knob and then bringing it back. But I'm very curious to know what you think about this because, remember, the previous generation, the infotainment was built within the actual um, dash center area. Seats look very comfortable, look supportive. I'm not really into the light gray color, but definitely that sport trim with the darker material um, really, really uh, made a nice uh, blending of the different colors between the Rally Red and the darker interior. But of course, you're going to get those leather seating surfaces. I like the way they brought it, the color onto the door panel. Standard size sunroof. Let me know if you were hoping for a panoramic on the, on the turning trim. Another thing that I want to point out, which there's a lot to point out with this 2022 Civic, is if you look at the center console, it's not gloss black. And if you look on the armrest there, it's not gloss black that's going to leave a bunch of fingerprints. They actually have this new material that they made sure was not going to show fingerprints. And I really want to applaud Honda for doing that, not just going flat black, bringing the style. Like I said, that finish right there, that honeycomb finish is ridiculous. Love the AC controls. Obviously, dual climate control, full electric seating up front on the turning trim. Really allows you to have a Civic that really is going to fit everybody's budget and everybody's lifestyle. These are going to be coming during this year to the dealerships. But the, the switch gear is really where it shows. There's your wireless charging, nicely placed up front, easy to get to. You got your USBs, your 12 volt, your USB-Cs. So, I mean, they have you covered. And then Honda Sensing technology, that safety technology. Everything's been upgraded. Adaptive cruise control is available. I mean, it really just shows the direction where Honda is taking even their smallest vehicle currently for sale in the United States, that sedan, Honda Civic sedan, bringing that to a higher level by just making some of these great evolutionary changes to make it want to be that standout in the compact car class. But hopefully this has been very informative for you. We are, fingers crossed, we're going to be getting our hands on a 2022 Honda Civic in the flesh. This way we could really wrap our minds around what do we need to zonk here, what is done right, and everything in between. But if you want to keep seeing these virtual unveils on Ready's Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Ready's Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you in the channel, click the first link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Click that second link, get yourself a Radies Rise Patreon membership. Become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Want to give it up to the best videographer in all the land, 
and also other lands as well. Give Lori some love in that comment section. She really set up the Rady Ride, Rady's Rides Cave very nicely. So thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.